Hey guys, Joe here, back to the word. Today with a video, Young Men Read This Book. I'm talking about Thoughts for Young Men by J.C. Ryle. It's not just for young men, it's beneficial for young people, it's beneficial for old people, but specifically the focused audience of this work is young men. I've had lots of friends recommend this. It's really a classic. I have not been able to make my way through it recently, working through just 75 pages and wow. So spiritual, direct, timeless. I'm just in this season of ministry and life was gleaning so much from this as I lead college and young adults just thinking about them and their life and where they are. This is a message. Young people, pick up and read this book, Thoughts for Young Men by J.C. Ryle. Specifically, young men need to read this book. I think it's a really clear call to young men to remember the Lord, to draw close in their relationship with Him, to to cultivate um, what God desires for young men in the Bible, to know we have an enemy out there uh, who is warring against us and is taking out young men early and we need to fight, to mortify, to kill sin. Just so many lessons packed into this book. You need to get your hands on it and read it for yourself. I'm going to be giving out copies now for years to come. And so I want to do this little video to kind of preview the foreword, which was written by Mark Dever of this work, and then also share on the back end some other resources and books that I've found very helpful in college ministry and my own life personally for young men specifically, but just young people in general as well. So with that, this is Back to the Word. My channel exists to equip and encourage you to read the Bible, good books, and have conversations that truly matter. Like, subscribe for content like this. So let's go ahead and hop into the foreword together. So this is the foreword by Mark Dever in the 2016 Banner of Truth edition, just a little bit over 75 pages of reading. He starts out talking about who J.C. Ryle was and his ministry. He talks about him being called a Mr. Steadfast or Standfast during a shifting decades of the 19th century when Ryle did ministry. He says, as his denomination, the Church of England was torn by movements to undo the Reformation, some pulling back to Rome, others pulling over into increased unbelief. Ryle stood fast as a proponent of the old paths of biblical Christianity. He was a local pastor for decades. He shares about his vocation and then spent the last 20 years of his life as the first bishop of Liverpool. Then he goes towards the end of his life. Ryle pulled together 21 of his sermons, addresses, and lectures and titled them The Upper room and one of his other lectures and kind of addresses that's most famous is his thoughts for young men is surely among the first rank in terms of extraordinary usefulness and timelessness for today then he moves into the next thing he talks about um about this work he talks about young men and how it's strikingly even contemporary today that it's still can be taken up by almost anyone in any age. So he talks about the beginning slash the approach of the work that Ralph starts out in Titus 2.16, specifically to the call to young men to be sober-minded. He talks about how Rao dispels, reminds, and exhorts, and he talks about how he does those things, that he dispels lies about the temptations young men face. He talks about dispels the myth that young men are strong, even though they believe they're strong, they're really... Uh, tempted by the devil, that he goes after them specifically. He reminds young men that they face a real enemy. Raul exhorts as only a seasoned pastor can do with these insights that he has. Uh, then Dever walks through the layout. He says the body of the address is composed of four sections. So we have the reasons why young men need to be exhorted, dangers young men face, and then he gets into counsels, more general principles, and then special rules for young men. He says much of this book is applicable for women as for men. And he says, and for the old as for the young, but it has a very special point or an application for young men. And I would amen that statement. This is beneficial for anyone, but young men need to get a hold of this and take its lessons to heart. So then he moves into Ryle does not write to entertain, but to instruct. 
and he concludes by giving the author's argument and layout. And so here's the layout of the book, Five Reasons for Exhorting Young Men. There are few young men who seem to have any religion. Death and judgment are before young men, even as others, and they nearly all seem to forget it. What young men will be in all probability depends on what they are now. And so the devil uses special diligence to destroy the souls of young men, and they seem not to know it. Young men need exhorting because of the sorrow it will save them to begin serving God now. And so those are the reasons he's calling on young men in this address. And then he switches to five special dangers young men need to be warned against. And he goes through pride, the love of pleasure, thoughtlessness and inconsideration, contempt of religion, the fear of man's opinion. Then he moves to six general counsels to young men. So general rules of advice. He says, try to get a clear view of the evil of sin. Seek to become acquainted with the Lord Jesus Christ. Never forget that nothing is as important as your soul. Never forget that it is possible to be a young man and to serve God. Do not believe the lies of the enemy on that point. He says, determine as long as you live to make the Bible your guide and advisor, and then never make an intimate friend of anyone who is not a friend of God. And then Dever has a note there about, yes, read this section carefully. It's important in our increasing secular age that we understand these lessons about friends and friendship. Then he moves into five special rules for young men. Resolve at once by God's help to break off every known sin, however small. Resolve by God's help to shun everything which may prove an occasion of sin. Resolve never to forget the eye of God is upon you. Be diligent in the use of all public means of grace. Resolve that wherever you are, you will pray. He says over here, I have detained you long enough. Prayerfully and urgently read the following work by Ryle. Mark Dever, August of 2015. So. So with that, there's the forward, uh, just a preview. I want to encourage you, go pick up this work, be it from Banner of Truth or other published copies. For the rest of this video, just a little bit more, I want to talk about some of my favorite resources for young men that I've encouraged them to use as I lead the college and young adult ministries at my church, our ministry, I should say, in class and do teaching of specifically with younger people. There are some works that I routinely uh, reference not only in teaching and sharing with them but even just personally have read or give to young men that I'm working with specifically so this one's going to be added to the deck really good and I'm hoping to even read it with some other guy, some of the guys this fall at my church uh, beyond that one that I've had a lot of people uh, start with who are specifically dealing with pornography addictions or other temptations young men are um, drawn towards is uh, for those who can handle it is John Owen's The Mortification of Sin. So this is the my copy right here is part of the John Owen um, Treasures collection, but you can get it by itself. Uh, John Owen, The Mortification of Sin, just talking about how we need to be killing sin. It comes from the verse in Romans that we should be killing sin and separating ourselves and doing away with sin. And Owen does a great job, even though it's a bit longer treatment, of making sure we don't take uh, we see the minutest, smallest sin, and we are about killing it so that God may live in us. And so mortification of sin has been really um, helpful for me to show guys um, that we're not just going after the branches or the leaves or the fruit of sin. We're going after the root and getting after the heart issue. And so that's been a helpful work to do that. Another book that's been helpful on the area of pornography specifically has been The Death of Porn, Men of Integrity, Building a World of Nobility by Ray Ortland. I believe I've put a video up on my channel. I'll link to it in the description where I talk more about this work, what Ortland's doing. Um, I'm really thankful what he does in this work is not just shame us, but teaches about our identity as human beings, um, our sexuality, how it's to be used for God, and how men can use their passion, their energy, not for sin, and not for self, and not for pleasure, but to create a world with human flourishing in mind to pursue God's holiness. And he says, 
a world of nobility and honor. So I think this was a great book. I'll link to a video I did on my channel in the description below. And then last, I also have done some videos on this work is Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices for those who love the Puritans. Just like, this is another thing, just like Owen. This is Thomas Brooks. He's one of the easier Puritans to read. And this is about the snares and the the uses, the things that Satan uses to tempt us and to hold us into sin and his remedies. Um, Brooks has given us remedies and helps against defeating the enemy that prowls around like a roaring lion. So great work here. I'll link to videos that I've done in the description for this as well. And there's some other books that I could talk about, but those are the four big ones. I guess I would add Riles to as now that I can come back to again and again as I'm counseling young men so to asking them like beyond the Bible, what can I read? These are some great books to put in the hands of young men, young people who are trying to pursue God and live for him. So with that, if you have any questions in the comments below, I would love to hear about them. would love to respond and learn with you guys. If you have recommends for young people, young men specifically, maybe you're another college minister, pastor, teacher, you serve that age group and you have another great resource that I missed. Um, would love to hear about it in the comments as well. So with that, until next time, continue to read, treasure, follow the word. God bless, and I'll see you guys soon.